Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with a request today. I'm going to do a painting of a waterfall, and I actually started this painting earlier, and I wasn't uh, very happy with it, so I flipped the paper over, and I'm doing it, um, doing it again. So basically, how we're going to divide the paper is like down here is going to be rocks in the foreground. Um, in the middle area, we're going to have the uh, the falls where the water is coming down from. We're going to have different kind of layers here and the water will actually be coming down I'm just going to do that lightly in a little bit of blue that will be um, painted over at some point I'm just going to throw in our water kind of coming straight down and out and down and out and down and I was doing this as a resist but I couldn't see my resist line to the wax and it was not working very well and this one might have another little cliff to fall off of so I'm gonna have that one over here kinda coming down and then we can have some of that coming down there. I'm sorry I'm drawing that so late but I just wanna be able to get this in where I could see it because just kind of imagining where it was supposed to be was not working very well for me. I'm hoping this will be enough that I can kind of go around these areas and not have to paint over it with any gouache but I might you know show you a gouache technique if that doesn't work because it's kind of a fun way to uh, to rescue a painting if uh, if it gets kind of out of control and you lose your whites of your paper which I, I typically don't use um, gouache but sometimes you know it's it's um, necessary and any bangs that you hear is because um, my daughters are upstairs playing they are having a play date so I figured well they're busy I'm gonna come down here and get a little work done so I'm getting these kind of like uh, just rocky cliffs put in here there we go I can hear the hear the girls running down the hallway they were playing we a few minutes ago just gonna get this in there so by keeping my pencil lines kind of horizontal like this is giving us the impression of those rocky cliffs all right I'm gonna go back and put some of these rocks and the rocks you know just kind of oval like you know jagged edged shapes you know what rocks look like you've seen them before um, any jagged lines are fine you don't have to worry about it too much I will share a link to this photo it's by Robin Lovelock over at paint my photo she's one of my favorite photographers over there um, I know some of you guys have had some trouble getting in uh, since they moved the site because they are kind of inviting people a thousand at a, a day um, to kind of get everyone migrated over there because it got so popular they had to have a larger site um, so you know please be patient if you haven't gotten over there if you've been able to get in over there yet, they are working very hard to get everybody accommodated. Oh my. Okay, I hear giggling, so I know nobody's hurt up there. Okay, and um, I think that's probably all I need for a sketch. I needed to kind of block out an area for the waterfall, and there's going to be foliage coming around here. So I just wanted to make sure I had that in there. And now I am going to go in with um, a flat synthetic. I'm using just a regular golden Taclon synthetic because I... Um, I don't want to hold too much water because I do want to make sure my darks stay pretty dark and I'm using burnt umber and ultramarine blue that's gonna make a really nice gray kind of like the pencil that I was using so basically what I'm gonna do is a little more brown there because it's a little blue go and paint the shadow around my um, where the water's falling so I'm going to keep the uh, keep the edges, and then I'll be washing it over it, and that will kind of give everything some level of that gray color. So we're just kind of—it's almost like we're sculptors and we're carving out that rock. So I'm gonna let this go. I, this video, I will let this video go as long as it needs to be. I'm not going to rush it. Keep it under 20 minutes. Um, because I know I must be excited for vacation because I think I've mentioned it like a zillion times. Um, so, you know, it'll also give you guys something to do while I'm on vacation. I will be posting daily content, but um, probably only a couple of those videos will be painting videos. 
It'll give you something good to do, something to work on. Tell me all about it when I get back, how you did. So yeah, I won't be too... I will not be able to comment on, uh, respond to anybody's comments during that time or answer any emails. Oops, I keep grabbing that wrong brown. Or answer anybody's emails because I will be without internet connection. It's nice to do that once in a while, I gotta say, be without internet connection. So I'm just simply painting around my waterfall. So you're probably thinking, Lindsay, why aren't you using wax? Well, I tried that and then I thought that was gonna be a good solution, but I did, wasn't happy with how it was coming out. Um, then you're probably thinking, Lindsay, why don't you use masking fluid? I know you have some. Um, because honestly, I don't like waiting for it to dry and I know a lot of you guys don't have it and I really want most people to be able to do the supplies with what they have on hand. I'm gonna kind of cut that off there because I want there to be kind of like water kind of just kind of spilling over the top. We don't necessarily see what's up there so I think I want to maybe cut it off there. This one can go up a little higher. So by putting in these kind of choppy strokes it's giving the impression of there being rocks basically. Um, or it should be by the time we're finished anyway. Because that's how it waterfalls are. Just kinda, you're just seeing the white as it topples over the rock. So it is kind of a challenging um, subject to paint, and I think that's why I get so many requests for it. I've been, I've had several people request waterfalls, and I was just kind of looking for um, the right inspiration. Hopefully I'll see some little waterfalls on my vacation, and I can paint some from nature, because I, I feel that's such an important, um, it's such an important thing to paint from nature because you just are going to miss out on so much if you can't observe it in real life because you might be like what is that over there you know what I can't quite understand what's what's there in a photograph because you're not there but if you're actually taking a photo you can go over and you can look at it and say oh that's what so I've got this little piece of cut up credit card I'm just going to drag it through some of my wet paint it's going to give me uh, uh, gouges and highlights here and there and it's nice because you can't really completely control it so you're going to get a much more natural look by doing this just trying not to interact in the water too much it's mostly just the rocks you give it those random textures and, and scrapes and it'll help it really look like rock and this isn't done this is just a you know preliminary le uh, layer okay so now I think I'm going to switch to a round brush because well I could do I could do a light brown wash to take a little bit more of that paint. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of um, like a little English red to that or burnt sienna, something to warm it up. I think or cad red, something that's gonna just warm it up a little bit. And I'm gonna add that to some of these rocks in the front just to warm it up a little bit. Can you grab a little yellow ochre too? to refill my palette soon. It's getting a little low on some of my favorite colors. I haven't decided what I'm taking for art supplies on vacation. I got this uh, kind of all media box from Royal Nightingale. I thought I might take that because I'd have a little bit of everything, but um, but I don't know. Then sometimes I like to have my, my favorites. I don't know. And then like a part of me is thinking, oh, I'd love to do some jewelry, but it's like, oh, it seems like whenever I bring something that's craft instead of art, like painting related, it seems like you need so much more stuff to just make make stuff to be creative because you need all the beads and all the supplies and tools and well if I just all I need is paints and brushes for painting so I don't know I haven't decided yet all right so that's in there and I'm gonna grab some hookers green because my palette doesn't have sap green use sap green if that's in that palette sometimes I find using a different palette every once in a while kind of keeps me uh, inspired and I don't think I want this flat brush. I think I'm going to go with something juicier like um, one of my Princeton Neptunes. Let's see. Maybe I'll go with this number 12. I don't know where my cat's tongue ended up. Hmm. Where is that brush? Pray tell. My little cat's tongue. I don't know. I'm sure it's around here. I'm sure it's in this messy desk area. And I think I'm a little bit of English red on there too because I feel like that green's going to be too vibrant. Let's show you my palette there where I mix the hookers green and lemon yellow. I'm just going to grab some of that green on the side of my brush so that when I tap I'm going to get kind of an interesting amount of colors here. 
and I'm gonna go right in with the hookers there. I just want some depths of the forest here. And grab some of that blue. That will help push it back a little bit. And grab some of that dark too. Just kind of dab in the texture so I have more forest texture than rock texture. But it's really going to be dark and I want it to kind of um, kind of seep into the background a little bit. Back in with the ultramarine, the green, the brown, the dregs of this color. Kind of help it seamlessly go in there. Then I can build some brighter colors once I kind of get that transition. See, it's one of those things about having the photograph. I'm kind of like, okay, I'm not sure what's going on there. So what I'm going to do is just kind of fake it a little bit. Now I'll grab my yellow and I'll grab a little bit of that green right on that brush. And I'll start adding that in here. And that will give the lighter and brighter appearance of some foliage. It's a little bit closer. All right, and then I'm just going to go in there with that brighter color because I do want some closer foliage over here. Like it's just kind of coming in around. So really, you know, what we're doing here doesn't really seem like it, but essentially we're just kind of putting in a background wash. I know it just kind of feels like we're blocking in our design, which we kind of are, but we're also kind of adding in that, um, that background. So instead of wetting our whole paper and doing it all at once, we are kind of trying to carve out some of our details at the same time. Okay, now I want to go in with some darks down here. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush only because I could get the control with this, but it's going to be too juicy. Um, and I think I will go, I'll go to the smaller round right now. And I'm taking the ultramarine blue with that burnt umber that, we've been, that we were using. Uh, so it's that same dark, maybe a little heavier on the brown. And I'm just going to go kind of go in here and add some depth around the rocks. I want a bigger brush that's not holding nearly enough. We'll go, I will use a Neptune, I'll just use a smaller one. Yeah, I don't want to have to reload my brush every five minutes. Mix up a nice big puddle of that blue and brown. Make sure I get a brush full there. This will go quite a ways before I have to reload it. And I'm not worried if I come across any um, wet areas because I don't care if I have a little bit of running. I just want to get some of those depths, the sides of rocks that are in the shadow. I do have to be careful. I got a little bit of water area here and there that I want to remain white for the time being, or at least just remain with the the color of my um, blue watercolor pencil that I put in there. Those are the Albright Drawer watercolor pencils. Um, you use whatever you have. It doesn't matter too much because we're really just using it for um, for sketching purposes. I want to grab some of that mossy green that we mixed with the lemon and the um, hookers there and add that to some of the rocks here. Because it is mossy and wet and it would be moss growing on everything in there. And I think I want a little bit more of that English red, but I'm going to tone it down with a little bit of that um, blue and burnt umber mix. Kind of liven up a few of these rocks here. Now probably this looks like a lot of random dabbing, which it kind of is, I guess. There we go. And I think I will go into the credit card scraper tool because it helps keep me honest and keep things looking wonderfully random. Sometimes we try to control things a little too much and then we lose the wonderfulness of it. All right, I am going, oh, you know what I think I'll also do while I'm at it is I'm going to scrape in some branches, tree trunks and stuff coming in from the side of the, um, the painting. All right, and now I'm going to dry this and then we'll move on to the water. Okay, that's dry enough. We're just going to kind of use a um, synthetic round. This is just my Aqualon and I am 
wetting the um, wetting the watercolor pencil that we put in there and I can actually soften because we use sedimentary colors in the background I can soften any edges where I feel like it's a little too harsh where the water's coming down so that's kind of I mean I think the waterfalls in watercolor are especially challenging because it's so much easier to paint that water on top. That's why I said we might go into gouache with gouache later. I'm going there and just kind of carve that out a little bit. Um, like to get that natural look on top of hard objects, to get that light, airy water. It's it's difficult. Oh, there's the water pump. Speaking of water, I'm going to pause this and I'll wait for that to turn off because that's immensely annoying. Well, there, that was actually a lovely break for me because I went outside and I sat in the beautiful sunshine. It's like almost 80 degrees out. It's beautiful. Very hard day to be in the studio when it's so nice out. All right, so I'm just doing what I was doing before. I am simply liquefying the, um, the pencil and also just smoothing out the edges next to where the water's running. And it's okay if it gets a little fuzzy and blurry there where I kind of go into the paint, the, uh, the paint next to it because when you look at waterfalls, and that's kind of one of those hard things to get, is it is a little fuzzy because you've got um, because you've got the mist. You know the, how water the water looks misty when it's kind of coming down. So you do kind of want to disturb that up a little bit and let it blend into your water to give it that misty look. It's kind of one of those things. I really encourage you if you're interested. Go try try this painting. Try painting it because it's one of those things that you need to do it in order to understand it, I think. I mean, watching it's good, but doing it's better. You can see how so much softer. Like, I mean, look at this side of that waterfall next to this side. It looks so much more natural there because it's softer. You've got that mist looking. And it really helps to turn your paper. That's why I'm working with this on tape to a piece of cardboard because it's going to help and if you get too much water, just blot your brush on a paper towel. You don't want to, you know, you don't want it sopping and running. You want it to kind of, like I'm going way over on that one because I didn't have it sketched in properly. And that happens. Blot that right out there. And I might need a little bit more. Uh, I might need some white there where I've, you know, or I didn't have that very accurately drawn, but that's all right. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm not entering this in a competition, and that's the thing with the white with the white paint. You know, if you're entering, there's a lot of watercolor competitions where you um, you can't use white. It's gonna be pure transparent watercolor, so no gouache. But, but that might not be what's right for you. You might want to have that white. That's completely fine. Oh, that looks better already. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just kind of blot that. Look at that. See, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about stuff off my paper towel even. I'm going to go ahead and do that over here. Get that water in there. It's funny how the water's white and everything else is dark. Usually we're used to seeing water that's that's blue. But when you're in the forest like this, you're just going to see the... Uh, you're going to see the froth. You're not you're going to see the water because that's just interacting with everything else and making the rocks look darker. You know, so that's what that black is. These are wet rocks in there and the shadows in there might be little pools of water that are making everything else look dark. While that's drying, I'm going to put um, some branches over here and I'm going to use uh, my burnt umber. And... I think I'm just going to use a burnt umber. Let's see what that looks like. I might need to darken it up a little bit because it's going to be silhouetted. But hopefully, I'm going to hit that with a dryer real quick just to make sure that I'm not going to be going over any wet areas. I think it's dry on this side. I think I did that before I took the break. Gonna, except for that water I just splashed on it. We're going to, I don't know how long this is going to take. I'm going to keep it, um, I'm going to keep it in real time though, I think. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do this branch. It's kind of coming across. Now, if you have an area that's looking a little awkward, that'd be a great place for a branch. You can disguise all the little imperfections. <laughs> and I don't want to do too much in here because I know I have to work on those rocks a little bit more, but I'm trying to do something while I'm waiting for something else to dry. some little branches up here. So I, I change going from 
the side of my brush when I want to have thinner and more controlled. And if I hold my, my brush at the end, I'm going to get much more random strokes. Okay. All right. Um, and now I think before I get too much further, I do want to kind of just go with a little bit of water. Maybe just a little bit of my, uh, that gray mix from my palette. Tone down some of the white that is not water. That's just that burnt umber and ultramarine. That same color. I'm just kind of toning down some of the bright, bright white spots because the brightest white should be our um, our waterfall. All right, now I am actually going to, I just stuck my brush in my little trash basket <laughs> instead of the water. Oh my. And I grab some lemon yellow. I'll bring my palette over so you can see. Lemon yellow and some hookers green just so I have a nice lemon yellow. This is this lemon is very opaque so I know that I can tap on the little tree uh, leaves over here and it'll show up. I don't want a ton, I just want a few. I want to have that contrast of the hard rock and the organic branches and the, you know, organic versus inorganic type of juxtaposition. That is your fancy word for the day. Was I just holding the palette in front of what I was painting? Good grief, I probably was. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, you'll be begging for a speed paint. You know what you could do, actually? You can hit that little uh, down by the gear. <laughs> At the bottom of your video, you could actually change it to a speed painting. You could just go like the two times feature and then you could, you know, mute me because I sound like a chipmunk if you do that, even more than usual. There we go. Okay, so we can leave that be for a bit. Let that, uh, let that dry. And I feel like maybe a few darker, dark I just put my paddle in the trash can. My goodness, that trash bin is uh, causing me some grief. I feel like I want maybe the... Uh, me some more darker rocks over here. That's feeling a little underutilized over there. It's feeling a little strange. We're gonna fix that strangeness. A little bit of the, you know, same rock color that we're using the ultramarine and burnt sienna. I'm just getting that in there. I just I feel like I need to darken that up a bit. All right, now we're gonna carve some of our foreground rocks a little bit more. So our scraper tool made some interesting shapes and we can just kind of pick some of them here and there to um, show up a little bit more to so can uh, take any of those scrapey shapes that we made and out not really outline them but kind of enhance some of the lines and that's going to give us a really natural look. We can have a little more blue versus brown if we want it to be a little more watery looking look more like puddles of water but everything should be quite earthy actually in here so we want to make sure that we don't go overboard one or shadows oh good grief that water pump's gonna come on again any minute now I just heard somebody flush the toilet upstairs <laughs> Is that too much information probably but you know we got the kids at home we gotta be thankful for it there, now we're starting to get some depth in here. I feel like I want to darken this area in there. So again, I'm gonna take the ultramarine and the burnt umber. I'm gonna show you this. I've shown you this before, I know, but in case you're new, I took all of my colors and I swatched it out here on watercolor paper and glued it to the inside of my lid of my palette so that I could see what these colors actually were because it's very deceiving when you look at the paints of color because they just look dark and you don't know how vivid and bright and beautiful they are. So a little tip for you. I just, I feel like I need more definition in here, more dark. I'm using my, you could use a flat brush. I'm just using that round on its side and I'm gonna go in with my credit card scraper and rock, rockify it. Rockify it? We should call it, we should, that's a good word. We're gonna rockify that waterfall, baby. We're not fooling around. We're cooking with fire. We're rockifying it, baby, dear. Don't you know? That's a main accent, folks. Any of you that are new around here, 
New around these parts. Can't get there from here. There we go. And I tip it a little bit. It's a little glary, so I'm just seeing how if I have that dark enough or not. We we can let it we can let it steep for a bit and see what you think in a few minutes. I'm grabbing a little more of the Indian red. And I'm gonna add a little bit of that some of these rocks here. The rocks that are closer to us. Just kind of give us a little bit depth. And the reason I'm using red is because this Indian red is um it's warmer in color. It's going to make our things come forward a little bit more. It's gonna be where our eyeballs are gonna look at it. Our eyeballs are gonna look at it, my gosh. Our, <laughs> our brains are gonna be like, hey, that's closer to us, because that is warmer in color. So a little perspective for you, perspective lesson. You might remember it. I might. <laughs> I don't know if I did a very good job uh, explaining it. Okay, and I feel like I want to direct some of the um, some of my water here because it's gotten a little stopped up here and there. So I'm going to use a stiff brush. Hopefully, I have one nearby. I might need to go find one. This one's probably stiff enough. I don't like to scrub with a synthetic brush very often because I don't want to damage them, but. Sometimes you need to kind of, you know what? I'm gonna pause this and get a better brush for this. All right, I grabbed a um, just a hog brush, hog bristle, one that you'd use for like acrylics or oils. But um, this is an acrylic one I've used for acrylics before, and I'm just gonna kind of scrub out some areas, kind of shape it like that. There, I'm thinking that that I actually want to go in and put some dark. and scrape it so it looks more like a rock. I don't I just feel like that doesn't look normal. It ain't normal. Gosh. In fact, I'm thinking I'm thinking that we just need a rock there cuz that's just not right. That water doesn't look right and it's my little world here. So, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Yeah, I feel it. Yeah, I probably sound like I really need a vacation, do I? My little, uh, my little trip to the stamp show was a working trip, so uh, yeah, I guess I'm ready for some just like serious off internet time. I'm just kind of scraping in some cracks in some of these rocks, and I want to put some uh, some like foliage over here, maybe a few branches and things. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some of that burnt umber again. And just put in a few, just kind of coming up here. I'm not going to go too crazy with it because I haven't decided if I need to do more to that or not. I think I do want to do a little more to that. Let's try, um, I think I want to do maybe with a fan brush. And I have a bristle fan brush here. And I think I'm going to do some kind of streaking. Streaking. Don't worry, not that kind of streaking. Just kind of streak. My paint's going to be wetter for that. Hopefully it's going to... You could test this. Probably should test this out on something first. Like a scrap of paper. Just streaking down some of the colors from the rocks to kind of get the motion. I'm going to be lifting some of this out, I can tell already, because I've got a little... You could use a, I, you know what? I would use a smaller fan brush if you're going to do this, but it's going to be fine. It gave me a little bit of motion lines. That's what I wanted. And maybe a little bit over here too. There we go. All right. And then that's going to dry pretty quickly. Why? I keep sticking my brushes in my trash can. This is not a good thing. We'll be people be crazy artists hanging out on trash day by my bins. I'll be like, Ooh, I want to get those brushes you just threw away. Let's just zap that real quick. And then we're going to use a small round brush to add some more streaks that are a little bit kind of like where the water might split apart. You might not even need the uh, gouache or the white acrylic, the white um, watercolor paint that I thought we would need. Why don't I try this baby? I haven't tried this out yet. This is one of my new ones from the stamp show. Actually, even better, why don't I try this one? This is a uh, Princeton Neptune dagger. So it holds tons of paint and it comes to a really fine point. 
I'm going to go in with my Burnt Umber and Ultramarine. See, it's got a super fine point there. And if I touch the paper with the back of my hand and it feels uh, room temperature, um, then I know that I can go ahead and I can add. So I'm just going to go in and throw in some... I should probably be a little bit more deliberate and a little bit more careful with my lines. So I can add... I should drag them up so I get them slightly thicker at the bottom. Alright, I still might need to soften some of those out because they do look a little bold. But I think at this point I'm going to let those be because I can always soften them out because they're sedimentary, made with sedimentary colors so I can scrub them and lift them a little bit more if I need to. I think what I really need to do now is focus on the foreground rocks and make them look nice and sharp. And I'm going to go back in with my um, flat brush. This is just, you know, that, that half inch flat. And I'm going to do my, um, take that English red I was using, pick up a little bit of the um, yellow ochre and the other gray mix that I made there because I don't want it too bright but I do want to be able to kind of define a little bit I guess is the word again holding my palette probably right in front of where you need to see I'm not doing so well today <laughs> I can wiggle back lines if I need to just, you know, don't be too rough with these brushes because they're not going to take it. It's not like a, a hog brush will take that much better because um, it's a much stiffer, more deliberate brush. I'm going to go in with the shading colors. Add some shadows. You have to know when to say when with this, though, because if you get too much um, detail and the rocks are going to look fake, you really have to know when to back off. And I want to put some moss in there. I think I want to use a sponge for that. You could use um, any sort of sponge that's got a little texture to it, even like a kitchen sponge. I am going to grab a little bit of water on it, squeeze it out, and get some of that uh, hooker's green and cad or lemon yellow. And I'm also going to grab up some of that just grunginess off of my palette and just kind of gently tap it in here on these rocks and then I can go and I can lift some off with the other side of my my sponge just want to get that kind of wet mossy rock look I have to move my, my head's gonna probably pop in front of the the camera here and there because I have to kind of look around the glare and make sure that I've got what I want to get there okay and I want to do a little bit more I think I want to maybe do some darker foliage up there. Let me do some lighter stuff and then I can do some darker stuff. Let me get some texture in there. And let me grab a little bit of maybe the cadmium color too. And the yellow ochre. Get those on the other part of the sponge. Kind of tap right over there so it can kind of blend in. Now I'm not holding the sponge so tight. I'm just kind of very randomly twisting and letting it do its thing. I don't know if I want any dark in there. Now that I look at it, I think I kind of like that. I think it's getting a little, a little busy, actually. And where's that dagger? I'm going to go back. I'm going to have to wash all these brushes. I've kind of gone here and there and all over the place with them. <laughs> oh my. Okay, I think I'm just going to throw in some accent lines in the water here and there and I'll go back in and soften a few up with my hog brush got some other fun projects planned to post when I'm gone to I have no idea when this one's going up I might be on vacation already I'm not sure um, but yeah, I got some new fun new things to try. It's always fun. It's always fun to try a new product. Especially if it's brand spanking new and nobody's even heard of it yet. So 
So that's always fun. Okay, I'm actually kind of liking a little bit of uh, of the blue that's kind of in the water there. Okay, so I think I do want to experiment with a little bit of white paint. So let's look at this the way it is so you can kind of formulate your opinion and decide whether you want to go ahead with the white or not. I am going to go get my little bottle of white paint and be right back. Did you miss me? That's oh, well, it's only a second for you. It was like 30 seconds for me. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of white here. Oops, this is a brand new. See, I don't use white very often. I The only whites that I really have are kind of like the student grades that come in kits or, you know, anything that's kind of come in something else that I've purchased. Uh, so I'm just going to get a little bit of that because I'm not going to need much. And I think I'm going to, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to use this little hog brush to do the flicking. Maybe I'll try a toothbrush too. We'll do a couple different kinds. That way we get a couple different kinds of spatters. And I'll start with this. Oops, I just drop some stuff. I need to dilute it enough so that it's kind of like the consistency of cream. Okay. And now I'm just going to drag my finger across it and kind of splatter. And I'm not getting really big splatters because the paint, I think, is a little too thick. We'll add a little bit more water. And plus, I'm just using a tiny brush. Okay, I'm getting a little more than I want there, so I'm going to blot some of that. We could try dragging some of that, actually painting some of that in there and see how it maybe... I don't know if I like that. That's probably a little too... You probably need a little bit thicker when you paint it on. Alright, I'm going to try the... Well, actually, I'll do a little bit. You know what? Actually, guys, let's make a little mask. Uh, let me get some paper I don't really care about. Actually, this will show up pretty well. Let's cut some rock shapes. Okay, and we will mask off a little bit. Okay, and then we can do a little bit more flicking. That way we'll, you know, make sense where our, where our little specks of white are coming up. And then I'm even going to try the uh, toothbrush here. All these little techniques, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of kind of, when you're painting, at least for me, there's a lot of kind of like making it up as you go along, kind of like, oh, well, this painting needs this, and that painting needs that. I need a little more paint, because that, I didn't squirt out quite enough, and I don't know what I did with that tube, my goodness. There we go. Toothbrush really takes up a lot of it. There, this is an inexpensive white. I'm not really worried about using it up. I have like 25 other bottles of it from some different sets that I have, so... Not a worry. We'll see when that dries if it's opaque enough. But see, it kept our spatter back there where we wanted it. I think I'm going to do... I'm not going to worry too much about the wet paint there. I'm going to do a little more spattering. I think that's part of like kind of part of the waterfall is having that spattering there. And I can blot up anything that goes where I don't want it to. So I'm not worried about that. Move that over here. So even just this random little mask that I made, I can still pretty much direct where I want it to go. I can have it spray on the mask more if I'm afraid that it's going to uh, not go where I want. I can blot here and there if I feel like I need to. I feel like we need a little bit of splash, more splash over here. And so it's kind of like splash and blot, splash and blot. I can do a little bit, a little, a little thicker maybe because I feel like it might not be as opaque as I want it to be. Use my hand as a mask sometimes. Like right there where it's kind of changing direction, that, that's where you're going to get most of the, most of the 
the frothing because it's hitting that area. Now this isn't a super, you know, strong current here, but you know, get to add a little bit of the, oh my, that's green. That's not what I wanted to add. I feel like I want to add a little bluer color into these, this water over here, like it doesn't have enough going on. Now it's got too much going on, so I just put green in there, but we will, uh, we'll scrub that out. Not a biggie. I always like get to the end of these, these videos and it's like, oh gosh, do I want to post that? Was that helpful? I just feel like I was, you know, clueless the entire time, you know, as I'm trying to figure out what I want to do from step to step. But then again, it's kind of exciting because it was fresh in my mind when I painted it. So I have the excitement over the piece. If I repainted it, I wouldn't have so much excitement. So I feel like I want something. I don't typically paint with white, so this is kind of exciting. It's kind of something different for me. You can also stipple in. And because this is a watercolor, this is not a gouache. This is a white wa Chinese white watercolor. It's not going to be quite as opaque as um, as like a gouache. And I don't like stippling on those little falls up here because it seems like that's a little too much. I'll try a little more flicking there though. I kind of like that. All right, I'm going to dry this. I'll pause it and dry it and see what I think and see if I need to do any more to it. And then we will be back and we'll have our final thoughts. Okay, so now I've looked at this. I've kind of let it dry a few minutes. Actually, it's not completely dry, but I, I took it outside, set it on a stump, walked away, came back, looked at it, and said, okay, what does this need? And what I determined was that I need to darken it up a little bit in some of the areas that are kind of, um, kind of in back the, the parts where the water is hitting so I'm taking the burnt sienna and ultramarine in a quite a dark concoction there and I'm gonna just I don't want to disturb uh, too much I just kind of want to darken I'm just kind of gonna put some in there and I think I'll just actually kind of go in and just scrape it with my scraper I think Because I feel like it just it was just too much one value. I needed that difference in value. I have lost my screen. There it is. What do I think? I just fling things randomly around here when I'm working. So I can just kind of darken that up a little bit there. It won't disturb the it won't disturb those white flecks too much. I just feel like it needed a little bit of a. Uh, of definition. I'm just kind of putting the paint down and scraping it. And I also felt that my trees in the foreground and my rocks needed a little help. So I think I'll work on the trees first. Darken it up there too. Um, yeah, we'll darken, we'll, we'll break it up, brighten up the leaves on the trees for one thing. So I'm going to go in with my, um, cadmium yellow and tap in some more leaves because they would be hitting the sun they could they'd be reaching up away from this like glen and just this kind of foresty area and they'd be getting much um, much more light and I'm using the paint fairly thickly here just a little bit of water on my brush but quite a bit of paint so it's kind of competing. And if you have any areas that are looking a little awkward to you, you can put a nice big juicy leaf there and then nobody has to know about that. A little top tip from, from me to you. Put a leaf on it. All right, and then my branches just kind of were nothing. They didn't look like anything. Um, so I'm taking a little bit of that uh, English red. I'm going to mix it in with that uh, blue and burnt umber I have on my palette already and I'm just going to go in there and brighten them up because they're just I think it's because they were silhouetted in the photo but I think I lost I had too much dark. I'm going to do a little yellow ochre highlight too and I didn't like that. I felt like it would they were just kind of non-existent trees and they I really needed something to offer some contrast in there so 
that's what I'm doing there. And over here, I think I could actually use maybe some darker contrast. That is the wrong brown. Burnt umber is what I'm after, not that brown, which I'm not sure what that was. I think it's sepia. Different, uh, different palette, different colors that I'm used to. Well, I use the Yarko one every once in a while. It's not like I'm completely, uh, it's not completely foreign to me. I am trying to get this pretty thick and dark over here too, just so I have that kind of gobo in between, the go-between, just like set design from college. You get that um, kind of forced perspective that way. You, you see this thing kind of in front, it adds depth and perspective. I'm actually gonna bring that trunk down a little bit further. Just, I'm, I'm trying not to go too crazy with it because I don't want it to cover up too much of my waterfowls because I was happy with most of them. And maybe just a few little leaves back there. Not too many, just a few, just to show how nestled this is. It's such a lovely little secret spot, kind of. There we go. Oh my heavens, that water pump is on again. Oh, all right, I'm gonna pause it again. And the pump's off and we're back. And I'm what I'm doing here is actually, I am lifting out some areas in the foreground, some of these rocks. I'm just kind of scrubbing off some of the paint because I just feel like it's not light enough. I don't have enough value contrast between the rocks in front and the rocks in back. And it's kind of bumming me out. So I am lifting out and it's going to add some texture and possibly damage the surface on my paper, but it's going to ultimately give me what I want, which is some texture and some difference in, uh, in tone and value. And I'm not going to worry about any splashes that I wash away because I, the overall goal is to have this painting kind of pulled together and it wasn't. And so I'm gonna take a little yellow ochre cause that's really light. And I'm going to add some really, whoa, I just stuck that right in my yellow. That's not what I want, right in my white. That's not what I wanted to do. I thought my palette was clean there. <laughs> Mistake. There we go. Just watered down yellow and I'm just going to add that. And then I didn't want to put um, white highlights or I didn't want to mix white with my paint to add highlights because I wanted to keep all those shadows. So I needed to keep my paint transparent there for that. Okay, oops, I splashed some water there. And now I'm going to go right in with my uh, same brush. I'm going to clean it. I'm going to grab that super dark that I made with the um, blue and burnt sienna. And now I'm going to go in and add some more shadows, but trying just to kind of get slices of shadow and not uh, get rid of all my nice bright rocks. Rocks and waterfalls, that is, that's a challenge, guys. So, um, so be kind to yourself when you try this painting and give yourself, like, this is going to look better tomorrow. It's going to look kind of like tonight. I'm gonna be like, oh, I don't know if I want to post this and I'll upload it and I won't publish it. And I will look at it in two days and be like, oh, okay, that's fine. You know, but tonight I'll be like, oh gosh, I can't, I can't put this out in the world. People will think I've lost my mind. Nobody's going to want to paint this. They're going to say, Lindsay, go on vacation already. You're lost your touch. You need to go revive. But I think it's going to be fine. I feel like I need, a, this is a weird, this is weird. We got to darken that up. That's strange. Uh, we could have some shadow rock there or something. Cause that is, uh, that's just odd there. That's better. Okay, so, and it's just, there's so much just kind of fussing and prodding and getting it to go the way you want it to go. Now, my favorite thing, I think I'm going to call this done. I'm not sure. I'll look at it tomorrow and hopefully not be disgusted with myself. And uh, so, take, see, you know, we all have those moments. I'm going to peel off my painter's tape because I love to have that big reveal of the nice, fresh, clean borders. I don't always do it, but I knew this is, this painting was going to take me a little while, so... I like having that reward at the end. I'm just trying not to stick my dirty fingers. That's why I'm holding this painting really strangely. Um, I'm going to peel off my tape. Notice how painter's tape, the blue stuff is less sticky, so it shouldn't rip your paper, but I also peel it off at an angle. That way it will uh, be less likely to rip as well. 
and just kind of peel that I did get fingerprints on there though wouldn't you know oh well that would be hidden by a mat anyway it's just kind of that first bit of oh, moment you get when you take your tape off ah there we go get that out of the way so you can kind of see it and I, you know what I'm actually pretty happy with it when I look at it in the monitor the way you guys are seeing it probably I'm like you know what that's not too bad you get that frame on there I'm telling you what bud that uh, makes it look pretty good <laughs> Yes, I'm sounding way too Mainer today. Oh well. Um, it's my heritage. I'm very proud. Um, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, let me know if you have any questions. I won't get right back to you just because I'll be on vacation until the 11th, um, but I will get back to you after that. Thank you so much for watching. Please share this with any of your friends that might like to paint this scene or have trouble with rocks or waterfalls or anything like that. Um, and I appreciate all the sharing, all the caring, and I really love the thumbs up and the comments. So thank you so much in advance for all of those. I will see you when I get back from vacation. Until next time, happy crafting.